Bring one whether you feel like it or not. Amen. I mean, glad to be here. Are you ready to tolerate my piano banging? Brother Chris is out of town, and a good reason we're going to be praying for his daddy here in just a little while. Amen. Did anybody come to Sunday school and enjoy Sunday school? None like the Word of God, is there? I wonder, did you, did you find that? Okay, let's try to sing this song, and then we'll get out of the way. Anybody remember that song about the windows of heaven being open? Get the lights up. Ready? This is fast. This is fast. This is not, uh... All right, are you ready? Let's try to sing this song. All right, ready? The windows of heaven are open. That's it, come on. The blessings are flowing tonight, and there is joy, 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 joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I traded my old tattered garment. Here's what He did: He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven, and that's why. Come on, sing it again. The, the windows, windows of heaven are open. The blessings are flowing tonight. There is joy, 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 joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garments. Then he gave me a robe of pure wine. I'm feasting on manna from Come on, let's sing this old song again. Oh, the windows of heaven are open. The blessings are flowing tonight. And there is joy, joy, joy in my heart. Since Jesus made everything right, I gave him my old tattered garment. Here's what Jesus did, y'all. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. Amen. Would you lift your hands in this Hallelujah. house and let's praise the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, what do you got, Brother Gary? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Raise our hands and worship Him. Hallelujah. name is called in glory. Sorry about that, Brother Stephen. <laughs> Charms no longer tip me for it, and my stand complete. And I'm trying to lead others to inside. All my heavy trials make me, he is helping me to be. Oh, he is so to help her friend and God. When my name is called glory, I'll be there. For the Lord. name is called in glory. I'll be there. Hallelujah. And I hope you will be too. I'll be looking for you. Hallelujah. Isn't it good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning? What a blessed day that God, God has given us to come and to worship and to bless His name. It's good to see everybody come in to the house of the Lord to worship today. It's good to see all our visitors and good to have Jennifer with us again and just glad you all came to worship. Let's bless the Lord for the good offering. You know, we shouldn't back up. We shouldn't be upset. I, I used to know people that when it came time to give to the work of the Lord, they'd get upset. 
they get upset that we receive offering in, in the house of God. But that's, that's, that's the way God ordained it. God said, bring your gifts to the storehouse. This is the storehouse of God. Let's bring it and bless the, the man of God, the, the ministry of this church. You know, that's what the money is used for. We bless the ministry of this church. We help throughout the community. So let's give as an act of worship. We should give with a, with a good heart, loving God. So let's give this morning and allow him to use us to bless others. Amen. Dear Father, thank you for your mercy, your blessings. Thank you for everyone that has come out this morning to worship you, God, and to hear your word. Father, we thank you that you've kept us safe and kept, kept us from the wiles of this old world, Lord, and brought us home, brought us back to your church, God, to worship and to bless your name this morning. Father, we thank you that you've supplied every need, oh, God, thank that you, we've Jesus. trusted to you. Father, we just thank you for it. I'll bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, when my name is called in glory, I'll be there. For the Lord has heard and answered every prayer. This course with me, everybody. Praise, 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 praise to the one, praise to the who sent us God's Son, who sent us God's Son. Come on, everybody, let's worship the Lord. Not according to how you feel, but in one. But because of his holiness, we praise you. Let's sing it again. Come on. Oh, let us praise, praise, praise to the only one. Praise to. Has it been good to you? together in one Lord. Sing this, come on, let's just praise the Lord. Somebody pray. Let's do it, let's just lift our hands toward heaven and pray. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift. One more time. Come on, everybody. If we do nothing else, let's just pray. If we don't get anything else done, we ought to be praising. everybody let's praise him say personal things from your heart right now come on everybody lift your voice let's praise the Lord we're Pentecostal people we praise him out loud and give him glory I know it's awkward if we haven't been talking to him all week but he deserves the praise all of the honor even if there's no mood music or organ he deserves our utmost praise our full heart of praise Jesus told the woman at the well that they that 
worship him and praise him must do it in spirit and in truth. Hey, and the Father seeketh such. That's the kind he's looking for in churches this morning. People that are praising. Praise him with their whole heart and soul and mind and spirit. There's a lot of us need God to do for us and in us and through us. We ought to praise him. Old Brother Ross used to come to Sister Hager's church. And he'd get up before they sung, testify. And he's his old time holiness, folks. I think you remember old Brother Ross. He used to get up and say, folks, if he's good enough to die on the cross of Calvary, we ought to be good enough to praise him for. That's not deep theology, but it's a truth that you can take to the bank. Amen. Amen. I'm so thankful for God for being good to me. We're grateful to have all of our guests here today. This church is back on the rise. We are climbing back up. We have been, we have been and are being purged. We've been beat up by the devil, but God's had us in his hand. And uh, uh, we had to say goodbye to a saint of God yesterday. And I hope to replace her in this pews with five people that need to know the God that Sister Gloria still knows. Amen. I know you're still standing, but good to have all of our guests here. Hey, be drawing your Bibles out. We're, we're hoping to baptize at least two after the evening service next Sunday. Amen. And uh, we're going to put them in the water here and bring them back up out of it. Amen. And uh, uh, might need a couple of help. There are a couple of guys, some of them helping move some junk out of the way back there for the stairs. I've let too much stuff pile up back there. And we ought to have to keep it clear to, because we have to be baptizing more people. So let's be praying. Amen. I, I want us, we're fixing to pray. Uh, as you turn to 2 Kings chapter 7, let me tell you a couple of prayer requests and then we're going to get to praying. Uh, by the way, we have two prayer meetings here during the week that's just prayer. Well, prayer request and then prayer. And if you can come to be with a, a small handful at 9 o'clock on Tuesdays, uh, no, no Bible, it's just, it's just prayer requests and, and pray, you know. And then Thursday afternoon at 7, Thursday night at 7, uh, we have a, a prayer meeting here. Uh, just a few prayer requests, a little music going on, and then, and then we pray. Amen. But uh, thank you to all the ladies that helped. Uh, with uh, food and, and to serve that family yesterday and cleaning up that mess. And uh, I just appreciate everybody involved with helping with that yesterday. Uh, and the youth service that we had, the youth rally, there was, a, there was a over 100 and some, I guess over 80 or 90 uh, young people. And then us, uh, there was over 100 people, all of us together. And uh, I know uh, uh, not everybody's eye to eye on every little Thing. Even I'm not, but I tell you, God blessed. And I saw young people weeping up here at all ages, praising and being touched to the Lord. I know you're still standing, uh, uh, but we'll get into this. But I want us to pray right now for Thomas um, Lancaster. He's in the North Naples Hospital, North Collier Hospital, not doing well at all. I went day before yesterday to see him. She was there, and it was their 71st, 71st wedding anniversary and uh, and he's not doing good lungs infected and he's, he's very he's aged while you've been married 71 years you're just an old man whether you however you want to look at it let's just let's just let's just pray for him right now and brother Donnie Boston which is Chris Boston's daddy man of God loves the Lord he's had a broken body messed up back surgeries everywhere but now this serious infection uh, and his and one of his legs real bad, and he's and he's facing some some serious things. There've been surgeries, and and uh, ten years ago he was a mess. He's just worse now. A sweet spirit, a good man, but his body is just needs a miracle. And I'd like for us to pray while we pray. The Lord bless this word again for us. Let's pray for these two gentlemen, okay? Father, let me hear you pray, everybody. Come on, let's lift our voice. Father, in the name of Jesus, the risen Lord. I'm thanking you, Lord, that you're still a healing God. And I, I thank you for your mighty grace. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, for the great testimony of Sister Gloria. Left out of here with an impeccable testimony. Thank you, Lord, for that. 
we'll draw from that until we meet her again. Father, I thank you for the way you moved at our service uh, regional back to school youth rally here. Friday night, we're praying that lasting results and a deeper hunger for you would grip everybody who was here, especially the younger generation, asking you to be glorified throughout the whole process. Lord, we lift up Thomas Lancaster there at North Carrier Hospital, asking you, Lord, to have mercy on his body, uh, 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 settle her worried mind, let the peace of God that would pass all understanding be upon her, but asking you, Lord, to lower your finger down into that room. You know right where he's at. To pray you'd heal him. Give him great mercy. Clear his lungs up. All infection. All whatever is in his lungs it shouldn't be. Asking you Lord to clear it up. And give him strength in his body. In the name of Jesus. We lift up brother Don Boston. Uh, 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 we're asking you God to touch his body. This world may not know what we mean by touch. But a touch from your hand can change universes, let alone one man's uh, body and, and everything that's wrong with it. You can do it in a moment's time because you're God and you're not a man that you should lie. And we're thanking you in advance for the coming testimonies concerning these prayers. And Lord, I'm praying for every person in this place that you would help us to be very careful to focus today. Open our heart for the Holy Ghost. Close it to the things of the world and the flesh. Help us, God, to let the anointing flow in this place, the pulpit and the pew. Let the word of God just saturate our minds. But help us to be a little better at saturating this place with praise if you allow us to be back tonight. Help us to have faith today. Help us to look to you, Lord. Help us to not look with accusatory eyes to anybody. Just look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We come in faith today, Lord, asking you, Touch us in the mighty name of the risen Lord Jesus and all other requests that were not mentioned in God. Please move in their behalf. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Just two verses, if you don't mind standing just a little bit. Sometimes you just get the old cotton mouth for you. I watched young kids in the altar trying to get the whole, young people, trying to get the baptism of the Holy get close, stammering lips, and their mouth gets so dry. I mean, just so... Cotton mouth. Devil says, oh, that's it. You better stop and get you something to drink. And that's just the half truth. You know, that if you stop, it's over with. You'll have to start all over again. Maybe it's next revival. Maybe you'll get the Holy Ghost next time. No, stop. Get you something to drink and get back at it. God will fill you tonight. It don't, it don't blaspheme the Lord to get you stopped and drink a little water while you're praying. <laughs> you get cotton mouth. Tell the devil to shut up. Mind his own business. Get you a drink and get back to it. Let God fill you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. God's a good God. Amen. 2 Kings 7 and 1. Please forgive me for having you stand such a, such a uh, long time. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. It's going to happen. You're going to see it, but you ain't getting nary bit of it. That's what he's told him. I just want to talk to you today about your 24-hour turnaround. I believe some of you has got a 24-hour turnaround. Hi, Jennifer. Good to see you. Father, we thank you for the word. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We've already prayed. Amen. Again, good to have everybody here. Uh, try to get to the visitors before they slip out and shake their hand or fist pump them or wave at them. Uh, and we're, we're, we're friendly church, but we want to be full of the Holy Ghost. We want to grow because the power of God's in this place, not just because we're nice. There, there are people that are nice that blaspheme God. So being nice is good. That ain't all there is. We need the power of the gospel at work in this church. There are people with strongholds, need to be delivered, need a place to go. Not just for friendliness. They'll be friendly to you at a bar. If they mean it, just two, two glasses of wine, same mean, turn, they'll turn sweet and nice. You know, just, you, you know, just mellow right out. They're nice to you in a crack house until everything falls apart. 
So we're going to be nice, but we need the power of God in this place. People need not just to feel good while they're here, but to be delivered from demonic oppression, depression, and even possession. Let us seek God and become those people. Amen. I want you to know that God uh, doesn't need weeks and months and years or decades to fix the condition that has some of you hemmed in. Uh, there are things he does slowly because sometimes, like growth, slow growth is better than fast growth. How you grow a church, you scrub up a church at a, at, at, at a place, a storefront, you don't, you don't need, and that church ain't going to make it if you got six people and three weeks later you got 800 people. That thing didn't grow the way God grows a church. No, that thing blew up, some news got out, somebody piled in there and it became a butterfly, big and beautiful but it ain't going to last long because there ain't no guts in a butterfly. You understand? But, but so God does some things in amount of time. In fact, he does some things way slower than we want him to. But I'm going to tell you something. There are people in this place and maybe listening by the camera that's in a dilemma that's hemmed in. They've got some things serious, seriously wrong. In fact, might even be getting harder to put a smile on when you come to church. Not because of hypocrisy, just don't let anybody down. Don't need it. Don't want to be vulnerable. Let everybody know the struggle that you're in. Might not be sin. Might be physical. May be walking with God, but some things are going wrong. You're praying about and see no sign of. I'm telling you, God is able to take care of your problem. And God don't need decades and uh, he don't need hours. Sometimes just the 24 hours, he'll turn things around. And sometimes you'll get a word that he's going to do it and you're going to have to trust him when it don't look like he's going to do it. Because sometimes he'll, he'll uh, well, you're way over here, he'll use something way over there to start that he's working on to get things fixed. That's, that's, that's what happens in this story. Part of the, the answer, the instruments that he uses seem like don't have anything to do with what's going on in this chapter. When you, when you read through the chapter before, there's a bad famine going on. Here, here's, the, here's the deal. This is the northern uh, uh, kingdom, the northern tribes. This king uh, uh, over Israel, the northern kingdom, is now headquartered at Samaria uh, instead of Jezreel where his father Ahab and Jezebel used to headquarter. They're in the city of Samaria now. I don't know, maybe higher walls. But uh, 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 he's an evil king. Been such great idolatry. And when God raises up an enemy to come against his own people, it's because of their disobedience. Oh, look at the book of Judges. Man, it's a roller coaster ride. It, it's just, oh, when this judge died, the people went back to doing things and right in their own eyes, went back to idolatry, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midianites. The Lord delivered them in the hands of the Philistines. And then the cry of the Lord come up. God raised up a judge. There we find Gideon and, uh, and that lady Deborah. We find Samson there. And it's all reforms. None of them lasted. And, uh, 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 and, but Samaria now is the capital headquarters city of the people of Israel. And uh, the famine is there because the Syrian army, the king Ben-Hadad was the king of Syria. And they were a pretty strong power at that time. And they were surrounding that city uh, the same way that it still happens some places when there's warfare. To surround the city, they come, they camp out. They have, the further back you go, there's food cauldrons, there's people that wash his clothes, a lot of people come, the warriors are closest to the city, but back behind them there are people cooking, there are people, there are setting up makeshift cattle uh, uh, cattle uh, uh, corrals. They're slaughtering animals. They come for the long haul to cut off Samaria so we don't have to lose any of us, so they won't hurl anything over here. We'll just cut off all of the life source and besiege them and starve them out and make them come out here and surrender. We'll have it all and won't even have to kill anybody except those that may starve before they finally surrender. They've cut them off and they have cut them off so powerfully and showed them there's no hope for any life to come in to that city. Amen. In fact, God had to allow this to happen because of idolatry, wickedness. And, uh, uh, but he cut them off so long that uh, uh, they were scraping dove's dung off of the window seals. And they were selling for five pieces of silver. They were eating things that's uh, not edible. They were eating nasty stuff. 
Some argued that they were eating the dove's dung, hoping that there was some kind of protein to keep them alive a little bit longer. Some said they were getting that, knowing that doves that eat a lot of seeds and they won't digest all of it and they were cleaning it out and taking it. It's gross, folks. But I'm going to tell you something. A famine will always bring this kind of stuff. Even a spiritual famine, when that flesh is starting to rule things, that Holy Ghost is gone, it'll stink a house up. It's bad. They'll start biting and devouring one another. You, 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 make, you know that I've seen that. I've seen that churches. That, that push that Holy Ghost away because of self. Hey, somebody going to rise up and take over. Ain't going to have nothing to do with God. Next thing you know, they're biting and devouring one another and consuming one another. And that's even as far as it went. They're paying 80 pieces of silver, 80 shekels of silver for a, 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 an ass's head, a donkey's head. I just, I don't know if eating the skin or that tender nose or the brain, not much meat there, but it's selling for 80 shekels of silver and I'm sure a bunch of them don't have any. It is so bad, they're starving. It got so bad that two women, each of them had a little baby boy. And you remember the story, just let me tell it for those who don't. And they, uh, uh, they decided that... Uh, this evening, we're going to boil my baby and eat that young at night. Our baby tonight. And you agree, tomorrow night, we're going to boil your baby and we're going to eat your baby. And if you don't think people will resort to cannibalism when they're starving, it's, there's records of it all over the place. People in deserted islands, people in Alaska, different times, I'm telling you, get stuck up in the wintertime. Even in this country, it happened going out west in the, in the gold boom, and it got, went the wrong way. They got hung up. People will devour one another, and they do devour the next generation when there is a spiritual famine. Amen. Just like any other famine. And a matter of fact, we find that they did boil one of those babies. I know it's gross, but it's the Bible. And we need to understand it's a serious thing to go into idolatry. When you know God is God, but you let that flesh have everything it does. When you push God aside. When you just start praying uh, once in a while when things are a mess, but God can't count on you to walk with him every day. That's a disrespect to God, and a lot of us have done it. I have. Amen. Uh, uh, but uh, Or we put stuff ahead of him. I know we're not bowing down to, we're not throwing our children uh, to the scalding hot hands of that brass uh, uh, Molech or Chemosh, whatever he was, the God of the Moabites, and watching the kid burn to settle the God of, of Moab. But we let them listen to just anything. Let them YouTube the filth of this world. You're just handing them over to the, to the, to the devil. Amen. So we kind of do that if we're not careful. But I'm, I'm telling you uh, uh, that it got so bad that they ate this little boy one night. And then come the next night, the mother of the other one who, desired, who, who uh, 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 agreed to kill her baby, boil it, need it, she hid her baby. Now this mother has lost that one. She comes out to the wall and sees the king, Jehoram, walking on the tops of the wall just with the guards and where the guards would walk. He's walking on the top and he's got his royal apparel on and he's trying to put a good face on a bad situation. You got to give him that. He's trying to people see that yeah it's pretty bad but see I'm walking up here in my royal robes he's angry on the inside and he's hiding it and he, he didn't know what to do and uh, his mama was Jezebel and his daddy was Ahab I'll give you a hint and he's no different than they are but he's walking with some royal robes he's got a couple chiefs up there with him trying to put on a good face and then while he's trying to fake it and act like it's not as bad as it is the woman that uh, uh, had lost her son to the boiling uh, uh, screaming out and said help us king and the king looks at her in frustration said, are you okay where do you want me to help you from from the barn floor or from the from, in other words where are you okay where am I? sarcastically nobody's got anything lady what am I going to help you with what, what have I, we got nobody's got anything I'm walking around here with this royal robe on everybody's hungry there's no place to get anything don't you know we're in a famine he's angry with her and then she shared the story hey well, but wait a minute we need some serious help here this is really bad I know but no listen we boiled my son last night and two families devoured him and a lady said she was go, we were going to eat her son last night and she hid her son and then that did it. That triggered his rage. That's when he jerked off his royal robe and he started tearing it to pieces and he grabbed some sackcloth and he walked upon the city walls and he said these words, God do more to me. He swore what he did by the name of God. God do more to me. 
the head of Elisha stays on his head tomorrow. If I don't kill Elisha, may God do the same thing. May he boil me and somebody eat me if I don't kill. In other words, I swear I'm going to kill that bald-headed prophet. I'm going to have his head. I'm going to find him, send somebody after him, and I'm going to take his head off of him. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to tell you something. If, I don't know if anybody's known this through the years, but there's a lot of things. There's a lot of people that prayed some things, wanted God to do something, and God did not answer them the way they wanted. The Lord said no. The Lord took somebody to heaven. They prayed to be healed. And the Lord said, no, I'm going to go ahead and heal them. Or they asked God to remove a thorn in the flesh. He said, no, I'm going to leave that there because my grace is sufficient for thee. And they wanted God to order a certain job, but God loved them enough because he knows the future. If they'd have got that job, they might have lost their soul, might have got fired. And the Lord said, no, I'm not going to let you have it. But they didn't get their way and got stark, raving, angry, raging, mad at God, but then took it out on the preacher. Took it out on the church folk. Just me, just us three? Anybody ever seen that? I've seen people nothing but just mad at God and get and then but can't get to heaven, can't shake the fist at God, have enough of fear of God, but they'll go after the mailman. They'll get angry. I'm gonna tell you something. That IRS may bring a letter and put it in your uh, uh, may bring something from the IRS says they go that you don't know if you'll have to sell your truck to get it paid off or go to jail, and you can get mad at the mailman all you want. All he is is the mailman. He brought the mail to you. And that's all Elisha is. Elisha said this famine's over in 24 hours. Amen. And he gets mad, or he's about to say that, but because of the famine was not because of Elisha. He's the, he's the, uh, uh, the mailman of God. I got ahead of myself. That's all right. He's not caused this famine. Amen. I know Elijah said before he went to heaven, he said, they ain't going to rain, buddy. Three years. It ain't rain until I say it rains. And they got mad at him, and they tried to make it him, but he was not given the word. He was bringing a letter from God, said, you tell them people I ain't going to let it rain. He said, my word, God's word through me, not going to rain. They have wanted to kill him. Do you hear me? I'm telling you, he, 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 he wasn't scared of him. He's not going to rain. Well, he, he did go where God said to go, where he couldn't find him, but he wasn't afraid at the time. He got afraid of Jezebel later on, but it's a different day. I'm just telling you that he didn't stop the rain. It's God that decided that. And Elisha didn't cause the famine, but that's who they went after. And the church has a problem. If a family has a problem, and they get mad at God, they want to get mad at the preacher, treat the preacher bad. But I'm going to tell you something. I ain't mad at you, God. I'm just mad at the preacher. And one day they came to Samuel and said, Samuel, your sons uh, 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 your sons aren't judging right. There's nothing wrong with that. But in the same verse, they said, make us a king like these other nations are. Get us a king here. Get us a king, and it grieved him because God never said he was going to give him a king. Amen. He prophesied that they'd have him later, earlier on, but he said, no, no. And he, and he took it personal, and God said to Samuel, I know you're getting mad. I know you think they're rejecting you, but they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. You're just my mailman. And when I preach against sin here, when I try to warn people, when I try to warn people not to get in love with this world, you can get mad at me all you want to. I didn't come up with that because I want my church bigger. I come up with that because if you love this world, the love of the Father's not in you. I didn't write that. I'm throwing it on your doorstep. You can get mad at me all you want, get gratification of anger, talk about me, get on Facebook. You ain't going to be the first one. Get in line. But I'm telling you, if I'm speaking what God said, it's going to happen until we get out of here. But it's not against me. You're really fighting against the Word of God. Amen. If I get it wrong, then I'm out of that. But I'm talking about when I get it right. Not even preach the right word, but with the wrong motive just because I'm mad. That ain't, that ain't good enough either. You got to pray about what to preach. You can't just find out what made you mad. Go, oh, I can't believe they're living like that. I know a scripture. I'll go find me a message. I'll top me up three pages and preach against that because I don't like that. I don't have that right either. Somebody said one time, he's on our way to work. He's going to go paint somewhere. said, I don't care how strict it is, buddy. I don't care how strict it is when they preach as long as it's the Bible. And I got to thinking, yeah, I know you're kind. You want that preacher to nail high to the smokehouse wall. You want, you want that preacher to get up and just beat everybody to death. I'm going to tell you something. This gospel's got some tough preaching. You understand me? If, the, if, if you love the world, the love of God's not in you. Come on, y'all. There's some tough stuff there, but we need to be led by the Spirit because there's some stuff there. There's still a bomb in Gilead. You hear me? There is some reprimand, but there's some hope to let you know, like I'm going to tell you today, your turnaround might be just in 24 hours. Who's going to give me a few minutes to preach? That's all it's going to take. I ain't going to preach long, I don't think. Uh, we, 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 we got a man, and he's 
He's going to kill Elijah. He's mad. Stark raving mad. And, and he ought to be mad at himself. He ought to be mad at the, the people in the famine are because they're in, they know the Bible. They're not supposed to be serving other gods. They're not supposed to be following his mama's Baal worship. They're not supposed to be playing around with them two, them two uh, uh, golden calves that uh, Jeroboam made up north, one in Bethel and one in Dan. And they're not supposed to be calling that Elohim or God. They're not supposed to be having false uh, 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 feast even under Jehovah. That's supposed to happen in Jerusalem. And after the division long time ago in Jehoram, they have two calves. And now Jezebel says, Two calves calling it God ain't enough. And she had brought this bell worship that didn't kill all the prophets, amen, on Mount Carmel, but still coming up again, still bringing bell worship, still full of the devil, just like his mom and daddy. This king's angry at God, and he's ain't taking it out, going to take it out and murder God's man, God's messenger, when the whole problem is idolatry. That land belongs to God and God's people, and God's people are supposed to obey what that book said. You understand me? And when you're disobedient, you get mad all you want to, but best of get mad at the one you look at when you shaving when you brushing your teeth you ladies that ain't shaving that face <laughs> somebody say amen are we going to go to church here today yeah he's mad he's ripped his clothes off at utter anger and rage and he's put sackcloth on the king now not a prayer shawl uh, angry uh, depressed mad Give up. Uh, just, it's all going to pot. No hope. And I'm mad about it. And I want everybody to know it. And on the wall, I'm going to let everybody see me in sackcloth and ashes now. And threaten to kill. And swear to kill Elijah, Elisha. And put his, take his head off. Amen. Let me tell you something. Elisha was Elijah's protege. Is that right? Elijah's done took to heaven. Elisha followed him. Got a double portion. And he would work double the miracles. It took his death to, to finish that last one. Had to drop a man on his bones. And he revived on his bones. That made it double miracles. And he, he brought people to life too. But, but, but just as sure as, uh, as uh, uh, Elijah did not hesitate to tell, uh, to tell his father Ahab how the cow ate the cabbage. I mean, get in his face and tell him, no, thou art the enemy of Israel, not me. I mean, put them bony fingers right there in the face of that king. And, and so it is that his protege, Elisha, he's not, he's not hesitant. He's not scared to tell Jehoram, his son, uh, what it really is. And he gets out there, and he sees him, and they look down, there and he, or they send a messenger first. And he said, now, this is bad. This looks awful. He said, I'm telling you tomorrow about this time. In 24 hours, God is going to turn this around. And uh, barley's just going to be two little old pieces, of, uh, just the two dimes or whatever. And uh, 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 the fine flour, a little bit more, because it's, it's not as cheap as barley. And it's not going to be at a thrift store. It ain't going to be old. It's going to be sold at the gate, the best market. It's not going to be at the, uh, what you call this grocery store here? It's not going to be sable a lot. It's not going to be down the yellow aisle. Kim said when they had cash and carry go town and get so and so and said don't even go down the yellow aisle. Don't get the, don't get the house brand. And green beans is just as good. You just pull a few more stems out. You know. They're just as good. A little shorter. You can eat them. You know. And put bacon in them. Bacon to hide a multitude of sin when it comes to that cheap, that cheap stuff. And Kim said don't even go down the yellow aisle. Get the good stuff. You know. I said well it's just not as. It, it costs more. Don't care. No, I ain't cooking that garbage. Amen. That ain't what. No no. It's at the very gate. Not hiding, not black market. I'm telling you, you're eating people today. You're eating doves done today. But God spoke to me and I'm telling you, in 24 hours it's not just barely over, but it's going to be cheap. You have everything you want. This famine is over in 24 hours. God don't need weeks and weeks and weeks. Now, there was a smart aleck on that wall. A Lord on whom the king leaned. One of his advisors. Let me tell you something. Leaders uh, are in a dangerous place, especially if God puts you there, but if you surround yourself by a foolish advisor. Or an advisor got hidden agendas. Hidden, come on y'all. Hidden secrets. You, 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 you're a leader, but you got an old high school friend. And you say, oh boy, if I ever make it, we were good buddies. I'm going to bring him on up. I'm going to elevate him, put him right here beside me. 
No matter if it's character, I owe him something. Uh, help me. He helped me cheat off his paper in college. So if I ever get somewhere, uh, he'd do the same. I'm going to help him out. And they pay. to surround yourself with evil counsel is a foolish thing. Come on, y'all. Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, did the same thing. He listened to the old man first. Uh, what do you think I ought to do? You need to back off. Your daddy got out of whack here, boy. He overworked the people, and he chastised them too much. If you love, if you become a servant to them people, they'll serve you till the day you die. You just, you just adjust. Go back to where Solomon had it right. Act like Solomon did before he sinned, before he messed up. Just adjust it a little bit. You just back off, serve them. Them old men said these people will waller all over. They'll love on you. They'll give you whatever you want. You'll be rich as your daddy ever was before he lost out. And he said, uh, boring. And went and listened to the boys. He grew up in the fraternity. Went and listened to the young bucks. What do you think ought to do? Oh, listen to them old cooties. They don't know what to tell you. They were around here. You saw your daddy fall apart. Don't listen to them guys. You tell them, you tell the people, you thought my daddy was rough on you. I, no, you thought he was rough on you. I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going uh, 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 to uh, not just discipline you with, with whips. I'm going to discipline you with scorpions. I'm going to let poison this big scorpion bite on you. Amen. And he went and told him, you thought my daddy was rough on you. I'm going to be, you're going to get in line and the whole 10 tribes seceded from him. Do you hear me? I'm telling you. And, and God broke it all up and it's because of evil counsel. Do you hear me? Somebody said it was prophesied. It was going to be, yes it was but it didn't have to happen with Rehoboam. Rehoboam could have prayed through. He could listen to the old man and let his son do the best. Come on y'all. Hey, Pilate had to uh, condemn Jesus to die and Jesus had to be condemned but it didn't have to be Pilate. It don't have to be you either. Come on. Bad counsel is a, is a bad thing to have. You can have wisdom and everything but listen, wrong counsel. David's son Amnon would have been the next king no doubt. He started lusting after his own half-sister. He could have got prayed through over it. God can deal with you in secret. He will never have to expose you in public. Come on. Ain't I been saying that since I've been here? If God can deal with you, get you to pray through something secret, you ain't got to go tell. You got to tell nobody in the broom closet. And confess and tell him, Father, I've sinned. Say three Hail Marys, you're all right. Put a bunch of money in the... Nope. You ain't... Nope. Just get on that... Get on your knees, repent quick while God's dealing with you. Oh, come on, y'all. I'm just telling you, Amnon went through a, he, 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 he fantasized about his sister. He said he loved her just full of sexual lust is all he had. And, uh, uh, but the Bible said, but he couldn't make himself do anything. The devil saw that. He saw him looking at her, and he sent his friend, which turned out to be his cousin, one of David's older brothers that was not chosen by Samuel and anointed, and come and uh, come in there and said, oh, what's the matter? You're losing weight. You're sick. said, I opened his mouth. I love my sister Tamar, and uh, I want her. And he's the one that said, ain't you the king's son? Can't you have what you want? Yeah, but I, it's not right. I can't do this. See, bad counsel will get you in the hunt. The Bible said he's his friend, he's his cousin. If you, with friends and counsel like that, who needs an enemy? That's cliche, but that's the truth. If, if, if you even sit by somebody in church that's playing around, playing with their phone, looking on the word, don't be rude, don't be nasty. Don't try to do it, make them look bad. You need to get up and that person. You need to sit somewhere else by somebody that's worshiping God. You sit by somebody that's mad in church, don't be ugly to them. But I believe I'd get up and get beside somebody that loves him enough to praise him in this house. Come on, y'all. That's right. You better watch where you get your counsel from. Amen? So Jehoram is up there. He's a counselor, and uh, 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 he starts smarting back off to Elisha. He said to Elisha, would that there were windows in heavens might this thing be. But you know what? He forgot that there are windows in heaven. Come on, somebody, help me right here. Somebody pray for me right here. There are windows of heaven. There are some windows that open in heaven that can destroy this world with a flood. The Bible said back in, in Genesis, when God was going to destroy, he broke the fountains of the deep, but he opened up. I feel God's spirit. He opened up the windows of heaven and poured rain out and covered this earth at least 12 feet higher than the top of Mount Everest Peak. You understand me? God can do that in 24 hours. It may look like building an ark, Noah. 120 years building it. God ain't talking to him no more until then. But when he did get it done, you better get inside, hoss. He gets inside. God shut the door. It starts raining. And I'm telling you, it rained because the windows of heaven were open. That's why I said, out a while ago. The winds of heaven are of, there are windows, but inside of those windows are also blessings for the people of 
God and God can open them when we call upon him. If he says he's going to, just wait because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they'll get it right out of the windows of heaven. They forgot Malachi. God was mad. God was angry at Malachi. That's the book right before 400 years of silence before John the Baptist come on the scene. Zechariah, Malachi, nothing, 400 years until there was a man named John. <laughs> yes, sir. Part of Malachi, as angry as God was, and said this Old Testament economy is a failure. Israel is a failure. I forgive you so many times. I'm scattering you. I ain't talking to you for 400 years. Amen. And even in that book, he said, you've robbed me. How have it booked up to God? How have we robbed you? He said, in your tithe and your offering. He said, Pay your tithes. Bring it off into the storehouse and see if I will not open the windows of heaven. And this smart aleck, this, this bad mouther, this doubter that the king had not a, ought to ever brought in to be an advisor, on the wall with him, here's the prophet that come up under Elijah and say, this is over tomorrow. And he can't say, oh, thank God, man. We didn't like Elijah. We messed up with Elijah. Jezebel shouldn't have went after him. Oh, man, when he said it, it always came to pass. Now this guy's supposed to have a double. He should have said, thank God, it's going to be over. Let's get rid of our idols. Let's quit being rebellious. That ain't what he did. He said, if there were windows in heaven, it might be. And he smarts off. And immediately a word of knowledge by the Holy Ghost came to Elisha. And Elisha looked up at him. Oh, got another word for you, young man. I'm telling you, you shall see it come to pass. You're going to see the groceries go down to what I just said they're going to go down to. You're going to see this famine over because it's going to happen. We're going to get a 24-hour turnaround like some people are going to get here if you just hang on to God, if you just trust God and believe God. He said, you, you're going to, we're going to get it. It's over with. You're going to even, God's going to make you see it, but you're not going to get any of it. You're not going to partake of it. What's that got to do with us? Let me tell you something. Let me bring it down to this LaBelle Church of God. Pentecostal church, a worship service, the gospel of what Jesus said he'd do, the Lord making you a promise. I'm going to tell you something. God moving this house and heal some people that have believed God. They're moving this house with conviction and somebody just believe that he's calling me. He do preach. I'm getting that audible confess. And they'll just believe God will save them. He'll do it. You understand? And there'll be people that'll sit in church. I've seen it all my life. There'll be others that sit in church, haven't said it's going to happen, but fold their arms and say, I don't believe it. I believe the days that, that kind of revival is over with. And I believe God will make them watch it happen all around them and they don't feel them anything because they have unbelief. You understand me? They can see somebody with eyes open that was blinded, but because of unbelief, they'll get this. Come on, y'all. Moses great man I mean, he's hitting he's hitting that red sea rolling back but one day he disobeyed God one time and matter of fact he come close halfway obeyed him not the rock of uh, 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 Rephidim the first rock he said smite the rock is that right everybody say hit the rock but he broke type 38 years later they need water again amen and uh, at Kadesh Barnea, Barnea. And he gets up there and he's hey, they're chiding with Moses, them younger ones now. The parents are most of them dead now. And it's all over again. They've not learned. And, the, and they said, now they want water again. And the Lord said, go speak to that rock. Don't hit it again. You'll have to break tight because my son is the rock. And the blood's going to come out for salvation, but the life, the water's going to come out. But I only want him smitten once. And if you hit that rock twice, that's breaking type and that's disobedient. But he got mad and said, how long do I got to put up with you? And I, do I have to bring water out of this rock again? And he smote it again, and God didn't hold against the people. Water came out, but God said, oh, no, no, oh, no, you didn't. That one time of disobedience, what did God do? In just a little while, when it was time, he said, come up on the mountain with me. Moses is going, oh, here it comes. Yeah, come on up here. Mount Pisgah, wasn't it Mount Pisgah? Take him way up there. Come to top rock, come up here. He's going, can you just hear the music? If there was any music, that would have been the tune. He's heading up there. Now look out there. He has a bird's eye view of the plains and the beautiful the land that flowed with the milk and honey. He said, that's where you're going to put them. Oh, that's where I'm going to put all these people because you disobeyed me and you didn't believe me, you didn't sanctify me in front of these people. He said, you're going to see this today, but you ain't partaking of it because of your 
somebody says, uh, I believe God. I'm disobedient, but I've got faith. That's impossible. You can say you got faith all day long. You're disobedient. You ain't got no faith. You ain't got faith. Faith without works, Jesus' brother, half brother James said, is dead. Right. Yeah. You ain't going to get there by your works. But James said, yeah, but I'll show you my faith by my works. I'm not just going to declare I believe something. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to walk in. If I don't feel chill bumps or not, I'm going to do what this Bible said. That's showing your faith by your works. Is that right? Amen. Amen. Even Moses got to see it but could not partake of it. As great as God used him. You can sit in church while other people are getting blessed. But if you don't believe, you're not going to get it. But God may, may make you watch it. And Elisha said to that man, you're going to see that God's not a liar. You're going to see I'm his man. You are going to know that when I said it's over 24 hours, in 24 hours you're going to see it be over. But you're not going to taste one thing out of that camp those four lepers are about to find, which they don't know about. He still don't believe it. Oh, you bald-headed idiot. He was a bald-headed pop. You bald-headed idiot. I know he's going, he didn't change. He didn't turn around. If he'd have fell down at his feet and started weeping and asking forgiveness, I believe he'd have got another word. God, tell him I forgave him. Go, go sacrifice a sin offering and I'll forgive him. That ain't what he did. The next day, now, they're in a dilemma. 24 hours, it's over. The focus is in the city, worried about the enemy. The writer of 2 Kings 7 seemed like he just left the story. And he went to the gate of the city, and there's four lepers. And you're like, what in the world does that have to do anything? I'm telling you, God, uh, when he says it, his way, and may not show you till it's done. You can ask him, he may, but if he don't, it's his business. Because we're not, this is not a democracy. We are bond servants of Christ. We don't just, we're not his sons only and daughters. We're also his bond slave. We're both. He is our brother, but he's also our master. Right? He's our savior. Yeah, but he's supposed to be Lord too. Lord over you too. Boss. Amen? And so he's not telling them how it's going to be, but he's expecting somebody to believe him. That man said, I don't believe it. Matter of fact, even after the news comes back from the lepers, the king, don't, he sends a couple of chariots out there. He ought to have been killed too for not believing. And he, he would be. Jehu would get him. <laughs> Jehu would get him just next chapter two. Anyhow, these four lepers are standing out there. They're at the gate. They've already been outcast. Before the famine ever come, they ain't allowed in the city. They people throwing stuff to them to eat, maybe that something because they ain't dead yet. Now they... They are victims of the famine, but they're dying a slow, horrible death already. And they're not allowed to go back in the city. They start doing the math. Now, if we go to the, into the city, they won't let us in. And if they let us in, there ain't nothing in there to eat. We done got word. Everybody don't have anything. Throw us out here. Didn't care about us. God must not be caring about There ain't nothing in there, so we ain't no use of going in there. And, uh, you know what? If we go to the enemy, it just might be. They look at us, see our nose missing, covering herself up, thumbs all eat up, skin looking spots all over it. We've cried lepers and we're hungry. They may know we can't do nothing to hurt them. They may just use us for messengers or something, maybe throw us something to eat. And if not, they'll just kill us. We'll just but die. Ain't got to die a slow, starving death and hurting with leprosy. So why sit we here till we die? And a lot of preachers preach and focus on those lepers. I do. I've preached on them lepers a lot of times. Why sit here till we die? Go on by faith and get to moving. Amen? And, uh, but, the, but they weren't the focus. They were just the instrument that was, God was going to use out of nowhere to save a whole city. They were just going to be what God would use. God will use the devil sometimes. <gasps> yes, he does. Don't ask Job if you don't believe that. Now, the devil is hoping to win, but God will even use the devil. He'll send a spirit to lie to a king that's disobeyed. Come on, y'all. I'm not making this stuff up. This is the Bible. Don't just read your pet scriptures. Read the whole thing, and you won't look at me like a calf looking at a new gate when I say something crazy like that. It's the Bible. I preach the Bible here. The Lord will use the, 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 the Lord used Nebuchadnezzar to destroy Jerusalem and to captivate and kill hundreds of thousands of Israelites 
He's the one that said, you bow down or I'll throw you in a fiery furnace. And the Bible said, he's my servant. He's going to, not a holy man, but going to do the will of God. Is that right? Come on. And these four lepers said, we, we will but die. Why sit here? Let's go into the camp. And they went into the camp. And they didn't find anybody. Let me tell you something. When God speaks through a man, when he speaks, it happened to be through Elisha. But when God speaks and declares, 24 hours is going to turn this whole thing around. No matter who disbelieves it, you won't partake of it, but it's going to happen. That's like the Lord's coming back whether you go with him or not. He's not coming back with a covenant. You just have to be in a covenant with him to go with him. He's coming back whether you're ready or not. And I'm telling you, this famine's over tomorrow for that Lord on whom the king leaned or not. And the Lord gave him a bonus. Not only are you going to be trampled to death, you're going to have to see that I am the truth before you go to hell tomorrow. That's what he's saying to him. He ain't believing him. The lepers go out there. Now, without speakers and amplifiers and microphones taped to their feet, four crippled up lepers walking toward the camp of the Syrians, suddenly the Lord made them, made their four, well, it's a four it's a, what's four times two? Made their eight feet, you have to give me a minute, I, I graduated in Hardy High School, Hardy County High School. They, the, it is eight, isn't it? It's nearly eight. You might have done lost a foot, they're lepers. <laughs> anyway, eight feet walking, suddenly God magnified the sound to make the Syrian camp think it was the sound of chariots, footmen, horsemen, and they thought that Samaria had got somebody out and sent word to the Hittites and the Egyptians and took them a bunch of gold and hired them to come and rescue them. That's what they said. Uh Uh-oh, we messed up. Somebody got out. Somebody ran to the Egyptians and gave them a bunch of gold and paid them to come and rescue them. If they send that big army from Egypt, oh, these Hittites, they bad to the bone. It's like a whole bunch of Jackie Chans and, you know, it's a whole bunch of warriors. And they heard four lepers, seven feet, hurting feet, walking toward them, sound like the chariots of the Hittites and or uh, the Egyptians coming and declared, "Uh uh-oh, they have hired big boys to come after us. They got so scared, Susan, that they com- they immediately left everything they had. They left their chariots. They left their horses. They left their garments that had been washed. There are big cauldrons all out there, all the way around, full of meat for the soldiers, full of meat for the people. There are, pe- there are big cauldrons where they're washing uniforms. There are the, there are the blacksmiths that are they're uh, making sure everybody's armor's good and ready. And they're, they're everything there, they leave everything and they lose garments. They drop stuff off on the way. And the lepers get there and find that there's everything they could ever want. Matter of fact, they're hungry. First thing they do, run into one tent, grab some food and start eating. Go into another tent, get some more food. They're pulling up all kind of stuff. Amen. And they're putting a bunch of clothes on. They're throwing jewelry, necklaces and stuff all over them. And one of them said, hey, hey, whoa. Whoa, we're doing wrong. We, get, we stay selfish. Something bad's going to happen to us. I got a feeling we're getting a little too selfish. And they went back and they told them the famine's over. They've left. The king thought it was a trick. He ain't going to believe it. But, but the people did. And the people started rushing out of the wall. And the king told the man, the smart mouth naysayer that said, if God would open the windows, the king said, you better get down that gate. It could get dangerous. <laughs> it did. It got dangerous. But nobody got killed and trampled on but him. Elisha said, you're going to see it, but you're not going to partake of it. You'll sit in that church and watch God bless people. But because of your rotten attitude, your anger, somebody, somebody said, you sang off key. You know, I hit some two or three bad notes on the piano. I'm a guitar picker, but I'm not a piano player. I hit bad notes. I'm just, I just not that good at it. Don't care. I just laugh and go on. What if I fall apart, somebody catch somebody laughing at me like Roy Lee did when I hit that bad part? We've been laughing at each other for 58 years. And, uh, and just go on with it. But what if I let that hurt my face, sit back here with my lower lip poked out 40 yards mad, 
God will bless some of these orders, but I'll miss it because I let my anger steal my faith. That's what that man did. That famine would have been over for him too. As wicked and idolatrous as he was, if he'd just kept his mouth shut and, and not disbelieved, he could have been that crowd that went out the gate instead of being trampled by those coming out the gate. He saw that's over, and they trampled him and killed him. You don't have to be that guy. You might be the four, one of the four lepers that you think your life's a mess. God can't use you anymore. You may be the next one God uses to do the greatest thing this church has ever seen. Samuel goes up to the, the first several sons of, of Jesse. He sees that big strap in Eliab. His armor's laying down at his feet. Big old biceps. Strong. Done been fighting with Saul several years. There's Philistine blood stains and dents in his armor. And Samuel goes, man, what? Woo, man, surely this is the next king of Israel. Holy Ghost said, he ain't it. Maybe it's Shammah. Maybe it's, oh, he's, hey, hey, he's almost as good as his older brother. He's one of them fighters. He starts to pull, no, he ain't it. Six, six, all, six, yeah, six boys. All down through, Holy Ghost said, not him. I know God sent me to your house. Said one of your sons. Don't you have enough? Yeah, I got a little old punk out there watching sheep. But he didn't know, ain't nobody want him. Nobody sits down and nobody puts a, 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 a morsel in your mouth. You get that boy up here. They some people hungry, son. They went and found him. They brought him up there. He's just unassuming. Pouch with some stones in it. <laughs> Laid his staff down at the door. Hung a slingshot up on the, on the nail. He's smelling food. Why ain't y'all eating? Samuel wants to talk to you. And the Holy Ghost said he's the one. The most unlikely one from the most unlikely family for the most unlikely little old hamlet called Bethlehem, Judah. And God made him the greatest king till Jesus hit this earth. The greatest poet warrior that ever lived, in my opinion. That's because God will use reference. Don't think God's got time for. He said, not many mighty are called. Because the mighty get too full of their self. Can't get empty enough for me to fill them up. Will you please stand with me as I wish Chris was here to play the piano. Would you, you got the piano thing going? I think I'm preaching to different groups here. I didn't mean to preach six messages in six directions, but you may be one of the lepers that feel like you're just all washed up. God can't do nothing with you. Yes, he can. God used a donkey to stop Balaam from, to keep an angel from killing Balaam their mouth and talk to him he's so stinking stubborn instead of going oh I've never heard a donkey talk he just answers her back I should have killed you <laughs> you answered her back instead of I'm sorry little donkey I'm sorry you tried to save me I should have killed you <laughs> and she's just dark talk to him had not been a good don't you know I'm not trying to hurt trying to keep that angel you don't see that angel you know God can use a donkey some people say God can use anything. Well, he can, but there's some people he won't use. He won't use disobedient people. He won't use disobedient people that claim to be his. He'll use an Nebuchadnezzar that don't hypocrite for some things, but that don't put him in heaven. But heavenward people, God looks for folks to obey him. Not talent. Remember when I preached? called but not qualified God does not call anybody because they're qualified he only calls the disqualified the unqualified he's looking for obedient people that'll say yes Lord yes to your will and to your way then he starts to qualify you he'll put you through it too boy he'll put you through it boot camp for God as bad as any Marine Corps boot camp I promise you maybe not on this body but it, on that mind against that old soul, that old nature, because God's looking for his son in you, something he can use. So you may feel like a lame leper nobody else wants, but you'll trust God, follow God in your hunger, and God will send you to the food, and you'll save others at it. You might be the Elisha that has to rub against everybody and speak the truth, whether they believe it or not, whether they want to kill you or not, 
Or you may be one of the people of Samaria, just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and now you're starving to death, eating up your own children, jealousy in the church, whatever it is. It's time to call on the Lord and ask God to turn it around. Let him take his time because he does things slower than we want him to. <laughs> so most of the time he's slower than we want him to be. But I can tell you, don't put it past him because there's a lot of, and suddenly, there's a lot of them phrases that, that says, and God did a lot of things in the Bible and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. And suddenly this appeared. Suddenly water came out of the rock. God can do things. Sometimes he just wants you to believe him after he told you and just give him 24 hours. Anybody need to turn around in some situations in your life? I do. Who will vote with me? I need God to do something in my life that I cannot produce. And nobody here can do it for me. Do that again. I need a turnaround. Look at here. It ain't a bunch of it ain't a bunch of nasty heathens. They some good Christian folks raising their hand in this house. Maybe all the way down to some people with some serious secret stuff that we don't you don't need none of us to know. Everything in between. Did you know Jesus died and bled for all of us? Bled and died for all of us. He can turn the situation around. He's not looking for how good you can get before you ask him. He's looking for you to say exactly what you are, that you need help, and it can only come through the name of his son, through that blood and his power. Because it's still not by might nor by power of man, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Everybody needs to turn around. I'm not going to prophesy to you that you're going to get yours in 24 hours. I'm just telling you it don't take God a long time. Sometimes it just takes us a while to trust him and believe him. Because when he's done, he's going to demand all the glory. When he's done, he's going to demand all the credit. That doctor, he may use a doctor to help you. The doctor helped me, but he couldn't have done it without the help of God. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. I, well, I'm about to get in the waters. I don't need to. You just open up a can of worms. I'm standing, I don't want to do that. Everybody that raised your hand said, I need to turn around in my life. Nobody's going to come up here and tell anybody else. Nobody's going to interview anybody. We're not counseling anybody. We're coming to pray. But I want you to bring it up here to the Lord. Put some, put some feet on it. Put some steps on it. And bring that situation to him. We're going to talk to God about it. Come on, everybody. Come on. If, if I have a situation, he turn around. Nobody's going to belittle somebody else's. Nobody's going to try to guess what yours is. If the Lord speaks to somebody, we're going to obey him. But if he don't, we're going to come. We're going to bring all our needs to the altar. We're going to bring all our needs. Oh, Dottie Rambo wrote a good one there. We're going to bring all our needs to the Lord. He's so willing and able to help us. So bring all your needs to the Lord. God's a good God. There's some tough stuff happening to the Johnson family. Tough stuff, but God can turn it all around. Let's believe him, give him 24 hours. I've watched you go through pure hell, Sister Anita. Over When you thought it was going to clear up, it just starts all over again. But the devil's a liar. God can turn all around. Let's give him his 24 hours. Let's believe him. In Jesus' wonderful name. There's nothing, nobody brought anything up here too hard for God. But you'll have to believe him now. You'll have to obey him if he tells you something to do. you got to obey him. Because you can say you believe him all day long. You don't obey him. You believe nothing. I believe you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. I need you. Now more than ever, it seems, but I need you. I need you, God. All the voice that's caused by situation or even other people that's unkind. Bad news, the voice, the gaps, I need you to fill them, Lord. You're not going to do it if you keep your door shut. Open the heart. Open your doors. The door of your heart, open up, let him in. It's still sweet to trust in Jesus and take him at his word. He paid a great price on Calvary. If you never feel another chill bumps, if you never speak in tongues again, if you never get another blessing, he's done enough to merit your praises by getting you in that gate, getting you in that holy city, dying for you, dying for you. died for you.
Hallelujah. There's still room for God to turn your situation around. Oh, wonderful bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. Fill our cup, Lord. There's some people even in a, a famine of God's word, of, being, of hearing it in their heart. God help me to be one of those lepers that'll preach the word, that'll bring word and bring news back to a city that's devouring one another, eating dove dung and donkey heads. Help me to bring them that barley to the gate and show them how the price dropped enough for everybody can have some and everybody can eat. Oh, my Father, as humble as I know how, I ask you to turn every situation in my life seem to be going south, seem to be getting south, and I can't seem to turn it around. I know you can. God, turn it around, Lord. Help us to give whatever amount of time, but trust you in the meantime. Not only have faith, but only speak words of faith and not doubt. God, forgive us our cynicism. Help us not to be a cynic. Help us not to get angry and smart off and go after the messenger when we're just angry because we didn't get you to answer us and jump through our hoops. I'm asking you, God, for deliverance and break every stronghold in this life in the name of Jesus. Break the strongholds in this life. Things that done got out of control are not too strong for you. Loose her mind. Loose her heart. Don't just make her feel good today. God, set her free from this. She knows what it is better than the rest of us, but you know, set her free in the name of Jesus, I pray. Take what's wrong and make it right. Take what's wrong, Lord, and turn it around and make it right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the faithfulness I see in, in the people of God in this house. Thank you, Lord. It's encouraging to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, blessed be God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful, wonderful God, wonderful, loving Savior. Let your sweet aroma fill my life. Rose of Sharon, show me, you got it? Out of beauty in God's life. Fairest of 10,000, make me a reflection of your life. Day star shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Lead me, Lord, I follow. Anywhere you open up the door. Let your word speak to me. Show me things I've never seen before I still want to be a witness you can take what's wrong and make it right I, day stars shine down on me let your love shine through me in the night Lord, I see a world that's dying, wounded by the master of deceit. There are multitudes, Lord, that's groping in the darkness, haunted by the years of past defeat. Oh, but then I see you standing near me, shining with compassion in your eyes 
That's when I cry, Jesus, shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. It's a good prayer, y'all. Lead me, Lord, I'll follow anywhere you open up the door. Let your word speak to me. Show me things I've never seen before. The bigger mess I am, Lord, I still want to be a witness. You can take what's wrong and make it right. Make it right. I pray, Jesus, shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Lord, I see a world that's dying all around me, wounded by the master of deceit. Multitudes are groping in the darkness, so wounded by the fears of past defeat. But then I see you standing near me, shining with compassion in your eyes it's when I pray Jesus shine down on me let your love shine through me in the night oh Lord lead me Lord I'll follow anywhere you open up the door let your love speak to me Show me things I've never seen before. Don't give up on me, Lord, because I want to be a witness. You can take what's wrong and make it right. So, day stars shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. It's no secret what God can do, what is done for others, He'll gladly do for even you. With His arms wide open, He'll pardon. It is no secret what God can do. May the Lord smile down on you. Let's meet back this evening in this house. Let's come worshiping him. I, I think maybe we're short on praising and worshiping God. Amen. May he pour his spirit out this evening as we're praising and worshiping him with all of our heart. God bless you. Remember, there's still maybe a couple praying. May the Lord bless you. God bless you.